So the chi-square test is about probabilities. In that case, it is if there an equal probability or a probability that finds follows some hypothesis that you have in the diff, each of the different categories. So chi-square tests are used with qualitative data. Whenever you're just measuring a frequency of something, use a chi-square test. So here is some data to do with snails, called Sapia nemoralis. They're the type of snail that you often see in your garden, which, or even around in London, in the, wherever there's trees and plants, you'll see them and they have a sort of spiral mark around them. So what we've got here is data from two particular habitats. And what you're measuring is the colour of the snails in the two different habitats to see if there's a preference in colours between the different habitats. So this is a mark of evolution. Has the snail evolved particular colour schemes to fit in particular environments so that it doesn't get eaten by birds? If I go to variable view, I can see the habitats, so I can see their values. So zero is coastal, one is hedgerow. And the colours of them are yellow, yellow banded, pink and pink banded. And so, well, if you look at these, pink is a bit vague. They're slightly pink, they're not very pink. The null hypothesis is that you're going to have equal probabilities for each of the colours in the two different environments. The alternate hypothesis is that the environment changes the probabilities of the different colours. So you'll have different frequencies between the different environments because there is a selection for colour based on where they're living. So again, we want to do a chi-squared test. In this case, you cannot have summarised data. You can't go to data weight cases by frequencies. You can't start with a contingency table. You have to have it recorded like this. So this is how you would record it when you were uh, getting the biological sample. You go to the first habitat, you'd collect your set of snails, and then you'd record how many of them have colour one, how many of them have colour two, three, and four. You'd enter each snail that you had collected as a row within your data set. So in total, you get 105 rows corresponding to 105 snails. So let's go and do the chi-squared tests. So if I go to analyze, descriptive statistics, cross tabulations. Now I can do a cross tabulation rather than just doing a frequency because I have two variables that I can use as my rows and columns. The standard way of doing it is the thing that you think is going to change the probability, so the treatment, the uh, cause, goes in the rows. And the outcome variable, the thing that you expect to be changed, so in this case, it's the proportions of snails using uh, having different colours, go in the columns. So that's set up. Now here, there are a set of boxes of selections that I can make. So I can do something called an exact test, but I'm going to ignore that. It's a very specific hypothesis test that has to be constructed for each type of data. I don't really want to go into explaining those, so I'm not going to. Then if I click on statistics, I can do all these things. So the only one that I want to do at the minute is the chi-squared test. Um, later, I might show you a risk example as well. And I do continue. And I press OK. So here, 
it summarizes the data. So it says that in the coastal things, I have 19 yellow, 10 banded yellow, 16 pink, uh, five pink banded, total of 50. In the hedgerow, I have eight yellow, 17 banded yellow, 11 pink, 19 pink banded. So I can work out the probability for being coastal is 50 out of 105. I can work out the probability for being yellow, which is 27 out of 105. So I can figure out the probability of being coastal and yellow, which will be 27 out of 105, multiplied by 50 out of 105. If I then multiply that by 105, it will tell me how many coastal yellow snails I expect to see. You can calculate from the probabilities. The, these things are called marginal values, so they are called marginal probabilities. You can figure out how many you expect in each of these different groups. So that's what I would do if I was doing the chi-squared by hand, which is pretty much how you have to do it in Excel. It's done all that for me and done the calculation. It calculates that the total of adding together all the differences between the expected and the observed divided by the expected. If you add all those values together, you get a chi-squared test statistic of 15.183. There are three degrees of freedom, which is the number of rows minus one multiplied by the number of columns minus one. So in this case, you've only got two rows, so two minus one is one. Number of columns is four, minus one is three, so one three is three. And the p-value is 0 0.002, which is less than 0 0.05. So there is a difference in the frequencies of the colours between the coast and the hedgerow. The environment is making a difference to which colours that you see. That's the easiest way of calculating the chi-squared or a cross-tabulation. You just have to remember chi-squared, that's the test statistic, here's the significance. Now I could have calculated it using the non-parametric tests menu. So I've got non-parametric tests. In this case, I've collected two samples. They're independent of each other. They're not dependent. Coastal and hedgerow are independent of each other, so I could click on independent samples. Again, I've got the wizard open up. It says objective automatically compare things. It asks for the fields. So what do you want to do is your testing across. Oh, test field doesn't allow me to do that. How splendid. I'm going to do a custom analysis. Let's see what this does. Hopefully this will allow me to do. Color. No, nominal fields cannot be placed in this list. It will only allow me to do. Compare medians, I definitely don't want to do. Automatically compare distributions. No, customized samples. No. How delightful. Can't do what I wanted to do through that way. I live and learn. What I can do then is go back to legacy dialogues. I can force it to do a chi-squared test. Here's the last thing I do. So if I can force it to do a chi-squared. And I do put in the two and go OK. What's it saying? That's not what I want it to do either. On the non-parametric test chi-squared. OK, so fine. I cannot do it by any other way other than doing the uh, cross tabulation. Which is good because I was going to tell you you should use the cross tabulation and not use. The non-parametric tests thing, so that's fine. Can't use them. Good. Now. 